Hi folks, welcome back to the Zonal Statistics tutorial. Um, this is our fifth video in the tutorial. If you haven't seen the previous ones, go ahead and watch those and I'll explain exactly what we're doing and show you spatially how these things line up. I'm gonna forego that for this video. I've covered it in the last videos. Um, we're just gonna jump right into things. Um, so if you remember in the previous video, um, we've got to the point we have some functions set up to get to convert a bounding box to offsets and to get a new geo transformation from the offsets. And then we've, we've actually rasterized um, our vector features so that we can now go through and start to calculate some statistics on them. Um, and so we printed out last time just the size of our rasterized vector, um, the shape of the raster, the sum of the rasterized features, and the sum of the raster to show that we have some different values there. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these print statements. We're not going to actually need those um, for our final product. And what we're going to start working on today um, is we need to mask the array in order to get only the values that are rasterized from the vector layer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start working on that now. And before I do that, there's one thing we need to do that I haven't, we haven't done yet. We need to define, or we need to get a no data value. And we can do that for the raster. So I'm going to come up here when I first load my GeoTransform for the raster. So this RDS is my original raster, the raster data set. And I'm going to get a no data value from it. So I'm going to go no data. And I'm going to just call this no data. Is going to equal. And that's going to be my RDS.get raster band. I want the first band. And then I'm going to type dot get no data value. And that will give me the no data value for that raster band. And we're going to need that to create a mask here in just a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and start to create this mask. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my array actually exists, that this raster array exists. If for some reason this failed or the offsets didn't work out right or the feature was so small for some reason it didn't pull a raster cell, um, I don't want to do this next part. So I'm going to type if our array is not none, okay? We're going to add another statement uh, in here that also has to be met. But we're going to come back to that in just a minute because it'll be easier to explain after we do the actual mask, okay? All right, so here we go. So we're going to do, we're going to call this mask array. And it is going to equal numpy, did I import numpy? Let's make sure. Nope, we have an import. So we need to do import numpy or numpy as np. So let's come back down here. So I'm going to do np dot ma, which is masked array. And then we want to do masked array. And here we need to put in our raster array. That's our input, okay. And then we need to specify, oops, sorry, let me do a backslash here. I'm just gonna actually do a backslash enter here so we can put all these on a new line and it'll line up a little better. Okay, so we've got our raster array and then we need to define the mask. Okay, so our mask is going to equal we're going to do a, a nump logical or. So we're going to do mp dot logical or. So this is going to select uh, cells where either condition is met. Okay. So we want to mask out anywhere where our raster array is equal to no data. So we don't want to include those values. Okay. And then np dot logical not tmp array and we also want to make sure we don't select oh no sorry, not tmp array this is a tr array our temporary raster array so that temporary raster um, is the one that is our rasterized polygon okay and so what we've done here is we've said uh, where our raster array 
equals no data, and where our uh, temporary array does not have values, we want to mask those out, okay? Let me make sure I have the right number of parentheses. Okay, that looks right. So we want to not include those. And so that mask is going to exclude anywhere we have a no data value and anywhere we don't have a value for our temporary array, which is our polygon array. Okay, now the second part of our if statement becomes the same as our mask statement, actually. Okay, we want to make sure that this is not going to be none. If this is none, then we're going to run into some problems. So we can actually put it up here, or because it's the same thing, what we can do is we can come down here and we can type a new uh, if mask is not none. And then we can come down here and start actually uh, working with our zonal stats. Okay, perfect. So that gives us our mask. That'll show us the areas we want to exclude from our analysis when we do zonal stats. Now we need to do one more thing, and that is to identify the uh, vector feature. Okay, so that's really easy to do. We're just going to call this ID. We're going to come above the if statement. We're going to call this ID equals feet. And I think we called this feet. Let me make sure. Oh, it's P feet. Our polygon feature equal, or sorry, P feet dot get FID. And that will get the feature ID. And so we'll be able to link up the feature ID with um, the values we're about to put on there. Okay. All right. So we've got our feature ID and we have our mask ready there. Okay, so now we can start to calculate the zonal statistics. And let's just go up and make sure we have a zonal statistics defined. If we do, there's our Z stats zonal statistics list. So now let's come down, and if mask is not none, here is where we actually want to do this. Okay, so we're going to do Z stats dot append, and this is where we can append the values. And I have spelled append wrong, so let's make sure we add the D on there. And we're going to actually make a function to help us do this. I mean, it'll make things a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to make a new uh, function. I'm going to call it, I'm going to do def, and we'll call it set feature stats. So this will set our feature statistics, and we need to give it the FID of the feature. Um, we're going to give it Let's define the stats we'll do here. So you can see I have these stat types, min, max, mean, median. Um, let's maybe cut these down just a little bit. And we can do all these really easily. Majority is a little harder. So let's get rid of majority. Um, you probably don't need that one anyway. And let's just go ahead and run through these. What we want to do is we want to set a value for each of these. And we're going to set it to none initially. Um, actually, yeah, we're just going to leave this all, we'll leave these all there. So we got a min, max, mean, median, standard deviation, sum, and count. Okay? So those are going to be our input parameters. And now we're going to create a dictionary that assigns all these. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and do, uh, here we go. So we want to do feet stats. We'll call this, uh, this will be our dictionary name. It's, or our, yep, so it's going to be a dictionary. Let's close that up. And then at the end, we're going to return feet stats. Okay. And so we have our stat types. I'm actually going to copy this. And uh, then delete it from here. And now we're going to add this as a parameter or an argument in our function. And we're going to call it names. And I'm going to paste it there. And so those are going to be the names of our statistics, which I have there. Okay. All right. And so now what I want to do 
is names zero, you want to assign the minimum value, just like this. Okay. And I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to go through and do this with all of our uh, values. We're going to have one for max, mean, median, standard deviation, sum, and count. So we're going to go down, and we're going to pull this up, two, three, four, five, six, um, max, mean, median, SD, sum, and count. All right. And now you could probably write this uh, so it was a function and you were, so you input a, a list of these variables instead of putting them in individually and then it might be a little easier to do it with an index in a loop or whatever, but we'll just do it like this for now. Okay, so there's how we're gonna set our feature statistics. So now we're gonna come down in here and when we append, what we wanted to append is we just wanted to call set feature stats. We're gonna pass in the ID and then here, actually let me hit backslash enter, I'm gonna put in the ID, um, sorry, backslash enter, and then if you remember we have min, max, median, um, mean, median, etc. So we're gonna just wanna put those values in and we can do this all now with numpy, all right, uh, with our mask array. And so I'm going to come down here. Where's our mask? I'm going to call this mask array because it's not just a mask, it's a mask array. I'm going to rename that here too. Okay, and so this actually has our values in it. It's not the mask, it's the array that results from applying a mask. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start getting these values from our array. And so we're going to do... Uh, our first one is min, so it's going to be mask array dot min. Backslash enter. Um, our next one is max. We're going to do mask array dot max. Backslash enter. And our next one is mean. We'll do mask array dot mean. Backslash enter. We're going to do mask array dot median backslash enter. Um, let's go just double check so we get these right. So we got min, max, mean, median, standard deviation, sum, count. Okay, so we want to do mask array dot, I believe that's std. Okay. And then we want to do mask array dot sum. And then we want to do mask array dot count. Okay, and so that should give us uh, everything we need. And so now we're go we've appended this to our zonal statistics variable. Okay, now we want to do is we want to add an else statement here. We do else, and in this case we still want to append these things. We need to append values, but we're going to have to append the no data value. No data. I'm just going to copy that and we'll paste it in for each one of these. Um, and so this will just show no data values in locations where, for some reason, the vector layer doesn't pick up any raster, raster values. And this could happen if your vector overlaps an area um, where you don't have a raster. So your, your vector comes outside the area of your raster. Okay, and we're just going to copy this again. Because we have another if statement here. We can do the same thing on this, and we'll just paste that in. So there's a, there's a few different ways that you could organize this. Um, to make it a little cleaner maybe, but this is what we're going to do 
for now. All right. So we've got that done. Um, what we need to do after this, we finish our else statement. Now we just need to make sure that our temporary data sets um, get removed so we don't cause any problems. So let's just double check what our temporary data sets are. So we have a temporary polygon data set. We have a temporary polygon layer, but that should get overwritten. And we have a temporary raster data set. So we want to call this, uh, so we want to come down here and we want to go TPDS equals none, TPLYR equals none, and TP or TRDS equals none. Okay, and so once we've done that, um, everything is cleared and we can go on to the next feature. And so let's go ahead and we will print Z stats out uh, after we've done this. We can see what our zonal stats look like. And I'm just going to add another statement. So we'll print zonal statistics. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and click run here. And this should, when we do this, I'll clear this to, to get us fresh. This should give us the zonal statistics printed out um, with a new row added each time. So let's go ahead and click run. And we have some invalid syntax here, it would appear. Let me figure this out for you real quick. Okay, and so the problem is we forgot to, I forgot to include the uh, parenthesis to close out the zstats.append. So let's put that on there. Uh, let's go ahead and try to run this again now. And it looks like I've done the same thing here. And I've probably done the same thing here. Make sure we get all those parentheses in there. So let's go ahead now and click run. Okay, and now we have no attribute median for our masked array. Um, and that is on line 99. So right here, that does not exist. Let me look up and see if I can figure that out for you. Okay, and so we can do this. We just have to do it in a little different way, I think. So... Um, we're just going to get rid of this line right here. And the way we can do this is if we do np.ma.median, and then we give it mask array, that should work. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a try again. Okay, so there you go. So you can see that first we have, so we have two features. We have zonal statistics, and we get a minimum. We get a maximum. We get a mean, we get a median, standard deviation, sum, and count, the number of raster cells uh, in that polygon. And then if we come down the next time, you notice we have two dictionaries, the first one here, which gives us the exact same thing we saw here, and then our next one here, which now has different values. Okay, and so we have... Um, uh, different different number of cells for each one of those. All right. So now uh, we're going to stop this video here. Uh, we've gone for almost 20 minutes, a little longer than I like to, but we've got our zonal statistics working. In the next video, we're going to come back. We're going to go in and actually check this. We want to make sure we have this right um, and have approximately the right, the right values in there. And so we'll go check that. Uh, and then, I don't know if it's the next video or not, we're going to go through and I'll show you how you can write this to a file uh, so that you can then join it back to your original vector layer. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Um, this code will be up on the Open Source Options website, opensourceoptions.com. I'm not going to get it up until we have finished the full tutorial. Uh, that way I'll have all the code up there and you can see it, and I'll include that link in the description once it's ready. Uh, thanks for watching.